you know, as I'm you remember you know, with all of my like three weeks of experience at the time doing it, <laughs> right. I would look at my palette of objects I could place and try to uh, imagine what had gone on in a particular space. Yeah. You'd well, like, our... oh, you know, I bet. Why is this loot here? Well, it probably got carried by someone, and that someone probably starved to death here. If all their stuff is still here, which means there'd be bones of him here, and so I'll leave a skull and some arms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in some sense, our 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 tools were were sufficiently limited that we we used everyone we that we that we could, you know. Um, Jeez, and uh, that's something that we I think really went it went went in whole hog on uh on system shock in later games yes um even though like we had a lot more options we we still did that kind of you know these days environmental storytelling would be the the, yep. the, the term of art for it it's a curved staircase up <laughs> that was, that's actually a very clever graphic yeah well because of the graphics were were simple by today's uh standards it actually offered some advantages you could suggest a lot like that curved staircase um without actually having to create a stir curved staircase have you figured out where you are will yes <laughs> ah ladder so I thought that it looks like your scheme was to backtrack out of the sewers to figure out where it where it actually opened up in the castle. <laughs> Couldn't let that go, could you? <laughs> so, Dorian, do you do you recall how much uh, kind of editing and modifying you did after you had the the level set up based on you know feedback and and QA? Uh, I mean, I have. I have vague memories of it that I was tinkering with it for quite a long time that you know the, even back then the like build feedback iterate rebuild more feedback more iteration like was was already kind of the, the design model that looking less espoused um, plus the fact that I had no idea what I was doing meant I was getting a lot of feedback so <laughs> it's a it's a great way to learn yes Well, I think part of it, it, it was it was an easier context to learn in because we were kind of all learning how to build these these three D immersive games. There weren't there weren't other games to look at and say, oh, I see how they did, you know, that encounter or or you know pulled off that kind of level. You, you sort of had to yeah. learn as you went. Yes, you just practiced. Build. I remember building a lot of little like fake spaces just to kind of get a sense of how I could make rooms look and you know how to mess around with you know variable height floors like which was a you know quite a novelty so and then I would try to take the lessons I learned from my practice spaces and apply them in the actual levels to, oh dead <laughs> forgot about the Will, death screen. Will's not very good at this game <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, right. Dorian, I think Will needs some help. Well, he may need some help, but he's not getting it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember where, how this all goes. What are, what, are the, what are the things we're trying to do with Underworld 2 was to create a, a more diverse world where we could explore different kinds of environments. And so we went with this you know, labyrinth of worlds, this multiverse kind of concept where you would uh, uh, you know, teleport between these very different worlds, like the ice, ice cavern world and, and such. Yep. Oh, uh, the slidey floors. With the slidey physics, oh, yeah. yeah. Remember this, uh, if I remember correctly, there's a kind of a puzzle room somewhere where you have to like angle yourself as you slide across icy floors and basically do a bank shot with yourself <laughs> we had a lot of experience of, of, of sliding around on icy surfaces yeah. living in new england yes yeah <laughs> uh, dorian did you do uh writing for this uh for I underworld did, 2 as I well did some i mean like ostensibly that was the 
the kind of the job description that I was responding to. But I mean, you got Austin, who's you know a better writer than I am. But I ended up doing some of the conversation trees. I certainly did all the conversation trees for the uh, Senseless Mage Academy, uh, which was the other than the sewers, the the other kind of world of the labyrinth of worlds that I was responsible for. Um, so yes, I do remember doing all of the like the conversations for that and learning. Uh, so like Rex's custom scripting language for how to for how to write conversation trees, which is one of my you know my earliest foray into I don't know if you'd even call it programming, but uh, scripting. Um, and I did some other spot writing here and there. I did a I did a, a chapter of the hint book <laughs> for Underworld too. I recall. Um, so some, I guess the answer is some. But you went on to do a bunch of the writing on uh, Thief, right? Uh, a little bit. And in, in each game that I worked on, there was someone else who was the main writer. Like I think uh, uh, Laura Baldwin did most of the writing on Thief, if I recall. Um, but I did a little bit here and there, you know, just to help out. Uh, same with System Shock, um, and same with System Shock Two, even. Uh, so I have a lot of probably secondary writer credits <laughs> throughout my game design career. Uh. Underworld, Ultima Underworld 2, like Ultima Underworld 1, had the, the scripted system of uh, for dialogue with the dialogue trees. What was your sense as a writer in trying to make those work and feel compelling? Uh, I actually, I, I found it quite enjoyable. Like, you know, I could, you know, just imagine how, you know, the different conversations would feel, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the different options felt like you were expressing, you know, different possible personalities because you know you're you know the, the character minus the player is just kind of a blank cipher so you know I wanted people to feel like they could be mean or nice or passive or aggressive uh, depending on their personal whims um, and it was just fun to you know write fantasy dialogue which was the you know, thing I kind of always wanted to do So, no, I like that. I mean, obviously, you know, it has its limitations because players will always potentially want to say a fourth thing that you didn't give them the option to say. Um, but certainly for the time, I thought it was a pretty robust system. And of course, on System Shock, we, we moved to uh, switching it around so that you didn't have dialogue trees anymore because we killed everybody off. Exactly. Yeah, that was really cutting the Gordian knot. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or in Thief, where everyone was alive, but but you were hiding from all of them, so <laughs> you could eavesdrop, but there wasn't really a, an issue of conversation. Uh, so I see on the on the text chat, people are are talking some about uh, what their favorite worlds were in the game. We've talked a little bit about uh, about your work on the sewers. Um, um, I recall uh, working on the. Uh, the prison tower, which is going to be the the first the first thing that we that we come to when we go through the gem. Coming coming up coming up here is going to be the the, the prison tower. Uh, Will is in the future, yes. Um, and uh, what was the the theme or the context of the prison tower? So let's see. Um, the prison tower is all right. So you're going to find it's a very small and very vertical level. Um, there's there's lots of these of these of these individual floors to it, or uh, and each each on a very small footprint. And so trying to trying trying to really um, make it make it very clear that it's a tower, right? Um, and I I think I think it may have conceptually just started from from the the idea of like having a world where you started at the bottom and worked your way up. <laughs> it may have pissed off everyone in the tower. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Um, now, 
you can talk to the goblins. <laughs> will 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 has chosen Will has chosen the other plan in his playthrough. Just bring the trap um, and fight your way out. But uh, and uh, this this world is is uh is in some ways it's a callback to, to Unrolled One, right? Where one of the one of the defining characteristics in that game is that you have a variety of factions in the in the Stygian Abyss who, you know, we we don't we don't just use goblins as you know, as a a comment on or justification of xenophobia, right? Like they they are a culture that is kind of you know like any other. And you, you don't you don't attack someone just because they're an orc or in this case a goblin. Um, and so the logical extension of that the the prison tower exists in a world where where everybody's goblins like they are they are the the the, the dominant humanoid race of that world um, and that's you know you'll find each each of these each of these worlds that we go through you know that has has some kind of identifying uh theme uh to make it kind of markedly different from from the real world or from Batania, uh with the with the possible exception of in for instance the ice world that we see here uh with uh with very very clear tropes right like the slippery floors and somewhere around probably a yeti who's going to try and kill you um and of course the ice worms because i don't know how that works um i think the, the, well, they're worm they're worms made out of ice Tim. oh <laughs> what was i thinking i guess the, the one exception to like the, the thing with like the the themes on the world might be killer and keep which which is just like britannia except it's it's kind of the mirror universe version of Britannia, and even even the layout of the castle there, if I remember correctly, is is uh, is is similar to the. It's amazing! It's almost like a, a zero friction floor there. Yeah. Yeah, that was probably Doug. I'm guessing doing the the the, the slippery floors. So what else can we say about the the design of the worlds? Um, Scintillus Academy, at least the. The, the mage's trial there, I remember a fair amount about about implementing that. Um, I mentioned uh, I mentioned Doctor Cat's bonkers work on oh, on on, on Talores <laughs> with all the bouncing red balls, right? My remember yes. that correctly. Yeah. Who did who did the who did the Ice World? Austin did Killer Killer and Keep, I think, right? This is this is so unclear to me now. It could have been in it. I could have worked on this world and I would I would not know. I have is some vague Monk? recollection of building one oh. of these pinball rooms. No, maybe it was Mock. It might have been Mock. Yeah. I forgot but. that Mark did level design on this game, but But you might be right. Uh, the, the other person who uh I don't know if it was first role in the games industry, but Star Long was uh, QA on this was one of the QA testers on this project. Oh, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. We we were blessed with good QA, as, as, uh, especially in our, our... All right, Chris is looking at me here to make sure that I'm not about to like slight him by excluding his QA work on Thief or anything. That that was many years later. <laughs> you, you were you were still a, a young child when this game came. Out. But uh, but from from this era. Thus, getting myself an out for offending any later playtesters. But um, I, the, in addition to, to, to Star Long, of course, um, Harvey Smith did did QA, uh, possibly starting on System Shock. I think on the original System Shock. I don't think he did QA he, on this. I know he did do QA on System Shock. I couldn't remember whether that was the first one that that he that he did with us. Did so. Harvey ever end up doing the time work for this? No, I don't think so. No, no. And and Warren uh, Warren Spector did some of the writing on the game as well. Really? Yeah, he did a little bit of the writing. Warren liked to have uh, maybe a little bit like you, Dorian. He liked to have a even though that wasn't his you know official role. He liked to get his hand in and do a little bit of writing. Warren, not not known to everybody, published novelist with his uh, his his. Uh, you didn't know this? His no. He did a he did a uh, a uh, a Marvel. A Marvel superheroes role-playing game branded novel, one thing after another. 
was, of course, Benjamin Grimm, the thing, traveling from one Marvel Universe 